Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm fantastic, Nathan. What's going on, dude? Uh, not too much. Can I ask a personal question before we jump in the episode? Mm, fire away. Okay, so I'm looking at you and I'm looking at the Sales Gorilla image in the background that you got going on there. And I'm noticing that when I first met you, you did not have a full beard. You had just a, a little bit of a goatee going on. And over the time of our friendship, you've gotten this, you've gotten like a full beard going on. And I'm wondering if it was a conscious decision to look more like a gorilla or am I just reading too deeply into things? So interesting question. I'll try and answer that as, as, as quickly as possible. So when I make a big change in my life, I tend to make a big drastic change to, to my haircut. Before we started the sales gorilla business. Um, I had been growing a beard for like almost three years and I, it had been huge and ZZ top and I've trimmed it back and changed all of that. Um, and right before we started to do this, I figured what the hell I'll get a crazy ass different haircut and I will shave off my beard. Um, and when we actually started, started, I didn't have even a goatee. Um, and then over the last two, almost two and a half years, I've grown out a full beard again and I've trimmed it back up. This look on me is just kind of like, this is me, right? This crazy ass gorilla hair and this full beard. And it just so happens to fit with the branding for all the stuff we do. Okay. I like it. I think it's my favorite look for you. But when I'm looking at you and then I'm looking at the image in the background, I'm like, I wonder if that was a conscious decision or if it was a branding thing. And it seems like maybe I was a little bit correct. Yep. Nice. Okay. So, that was completely off topic for what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, what, what do we got on the agenda for today's podcast? Ah, let's get into the work you do before you do the work. Okay, so I've heard you talk about this before. And actually, I was reading, um, gosh, it was one of the Sandler books. I want to say, um, you can't teach a kid to ride a bicycle at a seminar. And I heard this phrase come up and for the people that don't know, what, what do you mean the work you do before you do the work? Well, if you're a engine builder for NASCAR and you're going to go build an engine, it probably makes sense to have an idea of what the car is supposed to do, right? Um, when you go out and you find friends Almost all of us just do that process naturally. It happens haphazardly. We don't have any intention on who we're going to go start a friendship with. And because that's the way it happens in real life, we carry that into business and we just kind of think that, well, eventually I'll find and connect with people that will become my clients. An interesting thing about the sales mentality in business and as a salesperson is, no, you get to choose who you're going to go prospect. You chose your mate, right? You met somebody, you got to know them, you decided, hey, I want to I be with you long term, like let's make this official. We get to do that in business, but that time period can be shortened way down. And what it comes down to is getting clear on who it is that you want to work with and what it is that you want to help them work on. Um, it all comes down to market research, right? If you're a health coach, oh, I'm a health coach, I help people with their health stuff, fantastic. Who? Uh, people. No. Who? Uh, women. No. Who? Uh, women between 35 and 42 that have had two little kids that are now in school and they're looking to lose 30 pounds. Ah, now we've got somebody that we can actually go market research. It's the whole idea of, of being blindfolded in a room with four walls and there's a dartboard on one wall. And you get spun around a bunch of times and handed a handful of darts and you're throwing darts and you never end up with one on the dartboard, right? The whole idea with market research and being able to choose who it is that you want to work with is take the blindfold off, figure out where the dartboard's at, and then study the dartboard, right? And it's, a, it's surprising how many people don't think about this. Oh, I'm just going to go like, you know, connect with people on social media. No. Who? Fucking pick a who. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So here's the problem, and this is really the problem that I see you help people solve more than almost anything, which is I do the thing. I'm not a market researcher. I'm not a marketer. I'm not a, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a person who gets on calls and has a, a pre-formatted script. I'm a plumber. I'm a health coach. I'm a massage therapist. That's the work I do. You're telling me I have to do a bunch of work before I do that work? It's interesting because it's actually not a lot of work. It is, it is a simple process to find to define who it is that you want to work with because you can get them the biggest result and then figure out what it is they're struggling with. Back to last episode, right? What is the circumstances they're currently dealing with that they need fixed, right? It's just getting a little bit more specific. And there's a process for each of these. There's a process to figure out who it is that you want to work with. There's a process to figure out how to go find them so you can observe them and do some market research. And there is a process to initiate conversations with them. And there's a process to become the go-to in front of them as that market segment. And it's actually not a whole lot of work. Okay. So... There's a story, I think it was Abraham Lincoln, there's a story and a quote that he says, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four hours sharpening my ax. And I feel like people don't understand that if they just go in swinging a dull ax, they're going to waste all six hours and they're not going to be able to sharp or they're not going to be able to cut down that tree. Mm -hmm. But if they do the work before the work, the sharpening of the ax, each swing is going to be so much more effective. Um, I know that that's not the meaning of that analogy, but it feels like that's kind of what you're getting at. It's, it's so close that it might as well be the meaning of it. Um, if you don't know what you're after, how are you going to get that? If you don't know where you're headed, how are you going to get there? Right? If you don't know who your best client is, how are you going to get them? right? It, it's a little bit of work on the front end before you get to do the work. And this is, this is the distinction between having eh clients and having amazing clients. This is the distinction between having a hard time getting clients and having clients come out of the woodwork to you is being able to define them and then go observe them so you can validate they are in fact the people you want to work with. And that adjusts everything, your market message, your offer, who you speak to, how you speak to them, when you speak to them, all of it, right? If you're going to go on a road trip, it's probably a good idea if you want to get to a specific place to figure out where that is and how to get there. Just makes sense. Yeah. And I'm going to make one comparison. Before I started working with you, when I would get on sales calls with people, I had no direction. I didn't know where to start the call. I didn't know how to get the call to where I wanted it to be. I didn't have a process from, okay, let's cover this base first, this base second, this base third, and then wrap it all up with this fourth base. I had no idea how to do any of that stuff. And I was just relying on, well, somebody told you I was good at what I do. So let me see what you need me to do. And I'll explain how I do it. And hopefully I do a good enough job of convincing you that at the end, you're going to want to hand me some money. Um, I actually recently made that mistake last week i made that mistake on a call with somebody and it blew up in my face and then in between the day a day later i had another client because like i said i've been going through your program i'm getting clients coming to me a lot more frequently now two in one day or two in two days i screwed the first one up i went back and i listened to a training that you did with me on how to actually conduct a sales call and i did the work before i did the work before i got on the sales call I actually went through and I said, okay, I want the sales call to go this way. I need to do this, this, and this in order to direct the sales call. And I landed that client easy. Um, when it comes to even the, even the simple things like getting on a sales call, it seems like being able to sharpen the ax, walking in there with a sharp ax is just vitally important. Mm -hmm. Well, to each step of this client acquisition thing, there's a process. There is a specific, very set in stone, very intentionally laid out process to deliver a sales conversation. There is a very well laid out process to figure out who you want to get on a sales conversation with, 
right? At every step of this client acquisition piece, there's a very simple but very specific process. And when you don't follow it, it's they go fucking sideways. It's like they're awkward. They don't happen the way you want them to. You end up on the phone with somebody, you're like, how did I get on a call with this person? Like, oh my God, right? If you go through these simple little processes, it's very easy and it's very simple and they always go well. And yeah, I want to walk into a phone conversation with somebody that I already know beforehand I probably want to work with. And that conversation is just a validation for it. You use the, the example of Abraham Lincoln and, and the sharpening of the ax. The way I look at it is recipes, right? If I'm going to cook Thanksgiving dinner for my family, I should probably have a pretty good idea of what are the dishes that I'm going to make and what are the recipes for each dish, right? If I have that stuff all laid out beforehand, I know what ingredients I need to go get. I know how long different things are going to take. And Thanksgiving dinner shows up on the table at the right time very well done. But if I go into that day cooking that meal and I don't know what I'm going to cook and I don't have recipes and I don't have the ingredients, what a clusterfuck. And that's how most people go through client acquisition. It's just, it doesn't have to be that hard. Like really, it doesn't have to be that hard. True. So let's, as we're closing, I want to focus on one last aspect of this. And you've mentioned your ICA, your ideal client avatar. And we have this great tool, social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is that you're using. Let's go over a couple of things and don't give away the whole, you know, don't, don't give away everything, but I want to know a couple of things that when people are using these social media tools, what are some things to keep in mind when they're trying to narrow down, when they're trying to do the work before they do the work, what are some things that people should keep in mind as they're looking for people on social media, in Facebook groups to actually connect with? Mm -hmm. It's simple. And again, to go back to the last episode we, we did for the podcast, it's focus. When you're stalking people on the internet, when you're people watching, right? The focus is on them, not on what you want, right? If your focus is on them, when you're checking out people on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, and you're paying attention to who they are in the world instead of what it is that you want, all of a sudden the landscape gets really clear and you can begin to see people for who they are. And if you do that, it it, it doesn't take very long. You can go look at somebody's Facebook profile in five or 10 minutes. You can have a fairly decent idea of what they're probably like if you're focused and present and paying attention. Well, If we're going to get clients, one of the most key ingredients is is validating who we think it is that we want to work with. So go get a list of 10 or 20 of those people and then go observe them on the internet. See what they're like. See what they're saying. See how they're saying it. See who they're saying it with. And if you like that, they're probably close to your ICA. If you don't like it, go find another list of 10 or 20 people. It's simple. Nice. Okay. Another fantastic episode. I really dug everything that we got into today and just that simple shift of paying attention to their needs versus paying attention to your, to your own needs seems to make a world of difference. Landon, great conversation, great information. If people want to get more, uh, more gorilla juice in their ear holes, where can they go to get that? You can, you can get that at the salesgorillapodcast.com bitches. All right, man. Thanks again. And I will catch you next time. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't forget. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I just don't get along with. And that's how it's supposed to be. Peace out.